Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. Got another video for you today. And we have new artifacts on test server. These are the five new artifacts that are part of the Metal Part 2 uh, DLC, which is a uh, launch date TBD. Usually it's going to be probably in about a week and a half or so. Uh, so we've got the Strategist card, the Mort card, Page of Destiny, the Transformation card, and the Gem of Horus. Uh, the easiest way to look at that, the Gem of Horus is a Prec artifact. The Transformation card is going to be a DPS or healing artifact. Primarily DPS, but healing it should be good as well. Page of Destiny is going to be a healer artifact. Lamort is going to be a shitty might DPS artifact. And the Strategist card is going to be um, a general artifact for all. So in terms of uh, the bonuses here, so Tactical Advantage, Strategist card, basically it adds the damage over time, power over time, or healing over time on a critical ability. The Mort card basically increases uh, and adds effects to your finisher. Page of Destiny increases the uh, potency of your group heal, turning it into like a mini bio cap. Transformation card is you deal more crits and more higher crit magnitude, but you uh, reduce the overall total damage. And Gem of Horus gives you a new uh, tactical strike, or sorry, new tactical loadout slot, which is going to be Talon Strike. So in terms of the bonuses, how they're spread out between ranks 80 and 200 uh, are all fairly even. There's not uh, the only one that really stands out is the uh, Gem of Horus. I could be pronouncing that wrong, but who knows? Uh, Town Strike becoming eight targets is a huge jump from 160 to 200, which I'll show uh, once we break down that section. And if you want to skip to the individual sections of the artifacts, those links will be in the comment section below. So stay tuned to that. But uh, in terms of everything else, it, it's fairly spread out. In terms of the base stats, these are pretty weak artifacts overall from base innate stats. So like the Strategist card only has health and power. Uh, the Lamort card, which is the Might one, has uh, health, power, and Might. Uh, the Page of Destiny, which is the Healer one, has health, power, and Resto. The Transformation card, which is the Crit one, uh, has power, a little bit of Prec, and a little bit of Might. That's about the same as the Grim, I think, at 200, in terms of the 765, 478 Prec. And then the prec artifact is a 1912 health, 6693 power, and 796 prec. So, and the thing is, 5% health, 4 power, 5% power, 3% of everything, 5% power, 4 resto, 5% health, 4% power. So even so, the base stats of these artifacts are much lower than we're used to, like the solar, the stone, uh, the sparring, yeah, all these ones as well. Um, the 4% matches the Gemini and the stone in terms of its bonus effects, but. You're going to lose a lot of base stats running these artifacts uh, in terms of your max, uh, either prec or might, depending on what you do. And some of these effects make up for it, so it's not too worried. But uh, just by comparison, like the Philosopher's Stone has the same thing, 6693 power, but it's got 1,115 prec and 1,785 might. You know, the might artifact is still, that's still 500 might less. You know, you've got uh, Strategist card, which is supposed to be one for uh, all rolls, but you're going to lose massive prec and might running it because you don't have any base innate stats. The prec artifact itself is pretty low, so you're going to run lose prec there because it's got three percent bonus instead of five, so you lose two percent prec plus you know the 400 prec uh, base. So that's essentially what it does here. Uh, I'm going to dive into each of these artifacts individually and test them and break them down for you. So we'll see how it goes. Stay tuned. Okay, so that brings us to our next artifact, which is going to be the transformation card. Uh, now, I'm going to briefly talk about this here and then jump back to the actual uh, documents because it's much easier to show the actual testing there because uh, I have it broken down from the combat log analyzer. So essentially, you saw, once again, at the beginning, the breakdown of uh, what the rank breakthroughs are. Uh, you get Dark Bargain, so gain 20% critical uh, chance and critical chance magnitude. So basically, critical chance is how often you're going to crit, and 30% critical magnitude is the damage range of what your crit values are going to be. So say, say if you get a crit, it, it could be you know an extra 10k to 15k damage. That's to be the magnitude. The increase in that magnitude will be, you know, now instead of 15 to 25k, it's going to be 25 to 50k, you know, as an example. So that's what the magnitude uh, essentially breaks down to uh, on attacks and heals. Uh, and then the trade-off is you're reducing total damage and healing done by 15%. This is at 200. So as you saw, I think it's with 21% at uh, 80, and it goes 19, 17, 15. So we kind of do just a brief example. So essentially, the, the, I'll set up the test. What I did was Tesla Blast 100 times and did the combat log analyzer to break down what the crits were, how often they crit, the crit, uh, you know, the ranges, the damage. So essentially, I don't have the artifact on right now. So this would just be the normal crit spec. You know, we just got one there. I'll do like 10 hits just so you can kind of briefly see. 
So let's see. So far, out of 10, that was what? Two? So I got two crits out of 10. This is just as like a, a small sample. So basically, we'll put the artifact on now. Not that combat's going to affect it all, but we'll just start fresh again. So we'll do 10 again. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So six out of 10 just crit. And you just saw there, just a small sample size. So out of those 10 hits, we had two before and we had six after putting on the artifact. So you can see the kind of impact it has. And even though, which you'll see in the testing, even though the damage is reduced, because you're critting so much more often, it doesn't matter that the crits are reduced damage because you make up for it over a normal hit. So as you saw here, if I go like just briefly into the log here, so a normal Tesla Blast is, is like 10k, 11k, 10k, 10k, 11k. That's what it normally is. But a crits are 24, 23, 24, 25, 24. So even though the damage might be less on the crit, because you're critting, it's still twice as, twice as much as a normal hit would be. So you're still making up damage overall, even though it, the damage is reduced. So, you know, it doesn't matter. Even I'll show you, even I did the, the test at, at rank 180. Uh, you'll see that despite it being rank 80, which is a 20% uh, uh, decrease instead of 15% at 200, it still doesn't matter. You're still doing more damage because you're critting more often. So let's kind of jump to there and kind of give a better breakdown of what you just saw here. Okay, so this kind of gives a bit better of a breakdown here. Transformation card, same thing. So uh, Dark Bargain, uh, 20, 30, and 21% at 80, 19 at 120, 160, 17, and 215. So what does that actually look like? Uh, it's like they did at 100 Tesla Blasts and then uh, showed just the criticals. So this is the test without the artifact on. I have four, 42,597 might. My total damage was 1.4 million in you know, 22,132. So out of those 100 hits, I had 22 crits. The lowest one was 22.663, the maximum was 25.073, and the medium number was about uh, 23.7, so 23.7k 23 uh, damage with a 22% crit rate, because obviously because it's 100. So this is the one at 200 rank. So I had a 56% crit chance. So I went from a 22 to 56. The minimum stayed about the same, 22.589, 22.663, because this would be at a 15% damage reduction at uh, 200. Uh, the max is 24, 8, 8, 6, so obviously the max is lower because uh, of that 15% damage. And the, mini the middle one's about the same, 23, 8, 23, 7, so you know, hardly any difference there. But the total damage, 1.7 mil. So I had over an extra 300,000 damage. You know, yeah, the might's different by like, what, 25? Because uh, I, I couldn't get the exact might, but 25 might's not going to make up 300,000 difference. But, you know, this is how you see that even though you have a 15% damage reduction at 200, you're still doing way more damage because you're critting way more often. So even though the crits are a bit less or about the same as you see here, it doesn't matter because you're critting so much more, you're going to do extra damage. So as a comparison, I did rank 80 as well. So this is rank 80, this is 100 hits at 42,610 might, it's the same thing, all comparable might, 597, 622, 610, you know, that's not going to make any difference. And I was at 1.54 million damage. So even an 80 rank, I still had more damage done without the artifact. So even the rank, the, the, just the artifact 80, was a 46% crit chance, uh, the minimum was 21.3 versus 22.6. The max was 23.4 versus here, where it was 24.8 and uh, 25, because that would be the crit magnitude. And the middle was 22.3. So 23.3 versus 23.7 versus 23.8. But same thing, because I'm critting more often, I'm getting more damage. Even even at rank 80, just the, the cheapest artifacts, so rank 80 would be what? Uh, going back to uh, overall, rank 80. So 40,000 XP. So you only need 40,000 XP into the artifact. And and you're doing more damage than you would without it. Just based on the crits. And, and the same thing. Uh, the same thing can be applied for the healing as well. So this is just, it's easier to show versus the, the actual damage values uh, compared to healing, but it's going to be the same effect for healing. So your healing crits are going to increase. The total healing out is going to decrease, but as you can see, just with the damage, the overall healing is going to be higher because you're critting way more often on your heals. So it's just all together, it becomes a very powerful artifact by combination. The downside is if we go back to the overall, you saw before, you know, it's got um, it's got a little bit of prec, a little bit of minus base. I think 765 might is the same as like the Scrap of Soul Cloak. Uh, the other thing is the, the base innate stats are a little bit lower. 
you get 3% Resto, which you know, is fine for healing, not a huge deal, but 3% Might, 3% Prec versus like a Soul Amplifier, which would have 5% Might uh, versus the Stone, which have all the fours, you know, versus the Strategist card, which have all the fours. Obviously, the base is a lot lower. Like, say, the Philosopher's Stone has uh, 1,115 base Prec, 1785 Might. Same thing, the Solar would have 1785, and you're so you're missing about 1,000 Might there. Um, and yeah, but it's basically a thousand prec or a little bit less than a thousand prec. So you do lose some base stats, but same thing. You're you're critting so much more because of this artifact. It just becomes very powerful for DPS and healing, especially if you're going to stay an electric uh, power set, like say like a nature, or say electricity, whatever. As long as you're going to stay that type of power set, not switch out of healing. You know, it, it does a, a great job. Just like the Strap of Soul Clip would help both roles. This is going to help both roles as well. Your DPS and your healing side. So the the crits are just, you know noticeably increased even with a 20 percent so even with a 20 percent increase because this is this is spec with uh, max crit spec uh, so i have the 60 skill points into crits same thing with, with here as well so it's this artifact on top of the 60 percent uh, skill points based on the crits you just see the noticeable impact with the transformation card Okay, so you saw in the overview uh, what the strategy card looks like in terms of base stat. So if we go down here, only it's only got health and power. It does have the 4% innates, but it you know, just has health and power as that uh, actual innate. just has some extra bonus innates. So looking at the proc itself, tactical advantage. So upon achieving a critical hit on a target, there's a chance to apply tactical advantage based on a roll for 4 seconds at rank 180, and then anything else is uh, 8 seconds. So basically, if your DPS is going to be another damage over time, a controller would be power over time, and healer would be heal over time. So let's look at the DPS examples first, because that's what I'm sure most of you will be thinking, oh, I, you know, extra damage when I crit. So let's look at here. So I did find a couple of weird things. Well, not really weird things, but uh, things to note. Uh, so total damage for one proc at 43,982 might. So this was zero crits. This is right here. So basically, when you get a crit, uh, you basically get four ticks of damage. So same thing for, for the controller, for healing, for everything, it's, it's always four ticks. So either four ticks of power, four ticks of health, four ticks of damage. So in terms of at 43,092 might, uh, I was just sitting doing electrogenesis and having the dots tick. So procs on dots or procs on single abilities, just any critical power uh, or any critical ability that crits. Same thing with weapon damage, same thing. Anytime something crits has a chance to proc this for some extra damage. Uh, so at 47,706 might, so an extra, you know, 4,000 might, my damage didn't really go up by much. So zero crits, zero crits, same thing. Um, 16,000 damage from the four ticks, 18,000 damage from the four ticks, so it wasn't really anything to note. Uh, and that's not, so going down here, so 120 seconds of using electrogenesis. So that's a 12 second cooldown, using it 10 times for 120 seconds, it procced once at rank 200. So as you see back here, at rank 200 increases the potency of strength by 30%, so and doubles the chance at 160. So if you're rocking this at 180 or 120, you're going to have to DPS for like two minutes almost sometimes to get it to proc once. It's because it, out of 120 seconds of DPSing, I only got it to proc one time, and that's at rank 200 max. And even then, when I did get it to proc at 200, this was the damage that I got. So even so, one proc of at fifty one thousand, so fifty two thousand might. So it's like max artifacts, max gear, augment stuff like that. You know, that was twenty eight thousand and twenty eight damage, and that was two crits. So it took me two crits to get just thirty k damage out of it from one proc. So, the, and this is basically the comparison right here, the fifty one thousand nine fifty four might. So what I did find is that for some reason. Even though I wouldn't say this is like, there's no indication that this is meant for like a precision DPS. Like obviously it procs on damage, but it doesn't say anything like for precision DPS. Not like where Town Strike would be based on your hit counter. So obviously this makes sense that the town, like the Gem of Horus, would be a prec artifact. But the strategist card is not. But I was seeing it scale way higher with um, <laughs> with actual prec. So you saw here. So one proc at, at 52,000 might was tw uh, 28,028. Uh, one proc at 46,000 might with the transformation artifact. So the transformation card is the one that increases the crits. So with that, with both, I was still getting only 25k damage. And that was two crits. So basically 50% crit chance. So one proc had 26k prec with 49k damage with one crit. As you see right here. So the base takes, you know, 7526. Um, that's the range deck. 7690, 7813, and a 16k crit. At, at 52,000 might, my base takes are 43, 44, uh, a crit for, and two crits for nine. So even the crits were almost 
twice as, as they're the twice as strong as as prec. So for whatever reason, the strategist card uh, tactical advantage scales with your precision. I'm not sure if this is intended. Obviously, I'll post that feedback. But the way it sits right now is that it scales way higher with prec than it does with might. So what I'll do is we'll pop into the game and show you what the controller and what the healer procs look like with the same with the strategist card. So for the controller aspect of the strategist card. Uh, we're going to try to proc it here because the proc chance is kind of brutal. Uh, so I'm in controller stance. I'm basically just going to spam defib so you have the um, power over time. I'm sitting at about 18,000 vit. I'm, I'm in DPS gear, don't controller gear, so obviously this could be higher, but 18,700 vit is, is respectable at least so you can see what uh, it'll roughly be. So let's see how long it takes here. So essentially when it eventually procs, if we even get it to proc, uh, it'll be like a double pot tick essentially. That's how it's going to show. It just you have to wait until your actual power over time crits. And that's the problem because for one it doesn't. Uh, there we go. So it wasn't too bad actually. So you can see strategist card in, in the log there healed myself for 958 power, 789 power, 1004 power. Uh, and then critically healed myself for 1356 power. So that is at, you know, almost 19,000 vit. And it's only an extra, you know, it only ticks four times, same thing in damage roll. So that's be roughly, uh, it's not 4,000 power, but uh, close to four, an extra 4,000 power. And that's just basically over time. Uh, so it's, is it something that's worth leveling just for a controller? Definitely not. Um, because for one, it doesn't proc all that often, and two, when it improcs, it's not that much more power. Obviously, you can have 4,000 power just by spamming an extra defib or an extra recharge. Uh, it's not uh, not necessary power whatsoever. So let's show another set here. Okay, with the healing one, same thing. Let's see if we can get it to proc correctly at all. So in this one, I am set up with... 28,495 resto, which is low because on tester I don't have any. I guess I could. Nah, manacles is going to screw up that. Um, that's got some resto. Mm, that's got resto. Okay, so we can buff that a little bit without affecting anything. So now I'm at basically 30,000 resto. And let's see if I can get this to proc over time before I run out of power. Alright, there we go. So I'll show in the log here. And uh, where to start here? Strategist healed, 5,000 health, uh, 8227, that was a crit. Uh, 4979, 5, So same thing, that's what? 5, 10,000, 18,000, 23,000 health, basically, from one of those procs, which is the same thing. That's at, that's at rank 200 after it's already been boosted. Um, by 30%, the, the potency or the strength of it. So, once again, 20,000 health, is, is that really necessary of another healing over time? Compared to everything else you'd have with running like the Page of Destiny or the Orb, um, especially with the Stratus card having no base resto, like yeah, you get the 4% uh, restoration out of it, but it's got no base, base resto, so your stats are a bit lower anyway from that. It's just one of those things where if there was like a 4th artifact slot, then yeah, you could basically see this as a possibility, but Right now, it doesn't proc enough, uh, frequently enough, and the, the, the proc isn't even strong enough to, for it to be viable. Okay, so you just saw overall what the Page of Destiny, in terms of the rank breakthroughs, in terms of the stats, uh, kind of like the overall uh, comparison of the Page of Destiny artifact. Now let's kind of show you what it actually does. So essentially, think of the Page of Destiny artifact giving each healer, whatever class you are, um, turning your group heal into like a mini bio cap. So if you're not familiar with electricity's bio cap, uh, instantly restore health to yourself and the seven most injured group members if you or your group member's health falls below 45% with the next 30 seconds. Um, so with that one, the difference is that the page Destiny artifact would be 40% and that it wouldn't be, uh, it's not an eight man heal where if it's a 200 rank, you get an extra two targets like the group you just saw there, group heal heals additional two targets, so that'd be six. Uh, or the if you have it uh, rank 80 to 160 or 180, it'll only heal uh, four targets. So that's the difference there. 
So there's a couple points to or kind of tips that uh, are very important with this artifact. For one, the stacks are independent and unique to each healer. So if you have two healers with a Page of Destiny artifact, their stacks are unique to their themselves. So say you had a tank, uh, and then since you have to use recover, so your group heals would be recover, so that'd be a three second cooldown. You have to you get max ten stacks, so it would take thirty. You'd have to use this ten times, uh, or basically thirty seconds to get uh, max ten stacks. So as long as a tank's health or a target whatever didn't drop below forty percent, if you and another healer both had this at two hundred and used uh, the, had your ten stacks of uh, revivify on them, then that would proc simultaneously at the exact, exact same time. So both healers, both stacks will proc at the same time or proc early depending on uh, the 40%. So it gets a little bit tricky with the fire tank if their health dips like that. But uh, the prime example of this be if your tank never dropped below 40%, you had two healers with both uh, Page of Destinies at 200, both 10 stacks. There's there are both, the, so 20, basically 20 stacks worth of healing if they drop below 40% would happen at the exact same time in one big burst. Uh, the other thing to remember as well is that it, all it takes is one uh, group heal or one stack to refresh everything. So if, if that tank never dropped below, you know, because since they expire after 30 seconds, if that tank's health never dropped below 40% of that 30 seconds, you just have to make sure you hit one uh, group heal to refresh that. And you just keep maintaining 10 stacks and 10 stacks until that target dropped below 40%. Okay, so that'd be one stack, two stacks. Three stacks, four stacks, five stacks, six stacks. That was seven stacks. Let's be eight stacks, nine stacks. That should be ten stacks. And just I'll do another one just for good measure in case I forgot. So now we'll let myself drop to forty. And there you go. That was the proc. So 27, 144. That was the extra proc from Recover. So it may not seem like a large hit. That's why in combination with, like, say, the Transformative card, which would give you the extra uh, critical chance and critical magnitude, that'd be a crit on that. But uh, that's essentially what the artifact does. So all of them, you know, I'm not changing the way I heal. You're going to use your, group, your uh, you know, Recover just as you normally would. You know, there's some healer power sets that may not always have that four player heal, but now if you're running the card, obviously, if you're running the Page of Destiny, you can put that back in your loadout. But uh, you know, you're not um, you're not changing how you heal with this artifact. You're still doing the exact same thing. You're still using your instant recharge. You're still using group recover. Uh, but the, the bonus is that you get all that extra healing, and you can kind of, like I said before, time it with the the tank. It's, I think it's going to be easier with an ice tank and an earth tank because they have the higher defense. So uh, as long as they're defense and shielding, so they don't screw up as well. So if they, if, as long as their health isn't dipping to 40% all the time, then if uh, an attack goes through the shield, boom, you know, you don't have to do anything extra. It's an automatic proc. It's similar to like the orb where you don't have to account for the healing. If so, if that tank's health dip because, you know, he got it countered or made a mistake at all, boom, you, you don't even have to do anything. You already have an artifact that's going to get instantly give you that healing back over that 40 percent so as well i'll show it with uh like lesser stacks we can kind of go into it here same thing that's going to be one stack that's going to be two three it's going to be four and it's five so we can kind of show five stacks here that was a crit, so <laughs> that didn't help because the, the crit was actually stronger uh, so before. So the, the critical heal was to, was at about 28k, and where was the other recover heal uh, up here? It was like, tw yeah, 27,144. So uh, that shows you a crit with 5 stacks is stronger than a non-crit non at 10 stacks. Uh, so let's have a non-crit stack. Let's kind of get that properly here. So that's going to be 1. That's going to be 2. 3. Four. That's gonna be five there, so let's not get a crit this time. Yeah, thirteen five seventy two. 
So it gives you an idea there. So that's roughly half the, the healing. So if you have five stacks, that's roughly half the healing is 10. But if you have a crit at five stacks, it's stronger than non-crit at 10. So obviously a crit at 10 is going to be much stronger as well. So that's why I said in combination with, say, like the transformative card artifact, which gives you the 20% critical chance and critical magnitude on heals, uh, it decreases the healing overdone slightly, but you make up for that with the magnitude. So that's why it's a nice combination with that. But, you know, there you have it there. So it's it's still, it gives a really nice combination. In terms of it's going to break the meta with Scrap of the Soul Cloak and, and Gemini, you know, that's up to you. So it's more benefit, because groups like that that want to spam Supercharge most likely don't need the extra healing anyway. Uh, that's just something that uh, benefits each role. The controller can spam more power, more shields. You know, the DPS can use more, artifact, uh, more Supercharges so things die more often. Tanks can use their Supercharges more often to protect themselves. So it all depends. So if you have... Um, you know, in an in-league group or in-league meta where you're running Scrap the Cloak and, and Gemini as a healer, then yeah, that's probably not going to break that. But in terms of pug healing, like if you're just going out to heal pugs or just messing around, uh, or you got DPS that can't really benefit from the Gemini spam, then yeah, Page of Destiny is going to be much stronger than that, uh, the way to go. In terms of needing the transformative card, you don't necessarily need that to dump, uh, you know, another 150 bucks into a tune artifact. You'd still be fine. So if you're in like Page of Destiny, uh, the orb and like scrap a soul cloak or Gemini yourself just to regen supercharge for yourself and get the healing as well. But you know, it's Page of Destiny is going to be a, a very, very powerful healer artifact uh, to run in your repertoire, especially if you can get uh, nice combinations with two healers running it. Uh, it's going to be very beneficial. Okay, so just a brief overview of the Lamore card. Uh, you saw in the overall screen what it does. The current finisher abilities it applies to, Inviscerating Chain, which is two hits. So that'd be two stacks is the way to think about it. Uh, it's different. Inviscerating Chain also has a six-second cooldown. The rest have 4.4. So that's a little bit different. Pain of Thorns is also different because it becomes AoE in Gorilla form. Uh, light Blast is AoE as well, and it can combo into Snap Trap um, into Light Blast as well as Grasping Hand. Uh, Final Ruin, Defile, Torrent, Torrise, Gravity Shield Flash, Snuff Out, Photon Blast, Sand Blast, Energy Expulsion, Channeled Hate, Small Package, Iconic Drain, and Geiger Beam. Iconic Drain and Geiger Beam being different because there's seven hits each. Then the way we understand this artifact is that each hit will be a stack. So that means Iconic Drain and Geiger Beam will be seven hits or seven stacks per. So you take ten finishers to get to the 70 stacks maxed to have that the highest damage. And then the other thing Batuba said is that similar to the uh, Destiny Page artifact, each hit will refresh the timer. <clears throat> Sorry, the timer. So what I mean by that is that, say, Iconic Drain, you reach you reach 10 hits, that's 70 stacks. It doesn't reset or not like that. It'll carry on being 70 because each time you use Iconic Drain will refresh uh, all the stacks as well. Uh, Munitions Big Gun, even though it does more damage to targets below 35%, does not count as a finisher. It has to have a finisher ability symbol, which I'll show in the next clip here. Okay, so that brings us to our next DPR side effect, the Lamort card. So casting a finisher attack places a stack of doom on your target. Now, just as you saw on the previous page there, in terms of uh, the, all the finisher abilities, they have been changed to have this little icon above it now. Oop. Let's put uh, Circuit Breaker back. Iconic Drain. So finisher. Uh, as I said before, Munitions Big Gun does not have this finisher icon, even though it says it does more damage below 35% health, but it has to have this finisher icon, which is what uh, the, all the normal... Um, execute abilities or finishers have in the game now. So if we go uh, back to the card there. Uh, upon your target reaching 35% health, impending doom triggers, dealing damage based on the number of doom stacks it has, max 70 stacks. Uh, so reduces the cooldown of your finisher by 25%, increases its damage by 30% on targets above 35%, that's at uh, 120. 160 gives the increase of damage to the impending doom by, or sorry, that's um, 160 gives the stacks to 70. Uh, before that, it's max of 35 stacks, and then increase the damage of impending doom by 20%. That's at 200. So it turns it into th what they're trying to do is have finisher abilities be more viable because they've been terrible for a long time. Uh, so we can kind of see here, it's really awkward to test this thing uh, because. It, like the Page of Destiny, the healer artifact, your stacks get refreshed each time you use it. So, But the thing is, you have to get to 70 stacks, and you have no idea how many stacks are being applied to a target. You have no idea where you're at unless you're actually counting. Uh, and it's refreshing each time, so it's kind of... And the other issue as well is, once the, the boss or whatever target reaches 35% health, that's it. Like, you don't get impending doom anymore. Like, the boss isn't going to heal. 
Uh, that'd be pretty broken if you kept healing and then <laughs> you kept getting 35% each time. Uh, but you do, so after the, ar after the target drops below 35% and you trigger Impending Doom, really it's a useless artifact. You get some higher base damage from your finisher, that's about it. Uh, it'd be more beneficial just to wait till your boss, you know, wait till a boss gets down to 35%, get Impending Doom to trigger, and then switch artifacts out. You know, that's, that's really what it comes down to. Because you do have a, a base damage loss, as you saw on that overall screen. Um, it's only 3% might instead of like a 4 or 5% like some other fire artifacts. Um, the might's not too much of a loss. 1275 versus uh, 1785 was the solar and the stone. So it's not a huge damage loss or might loss from that for base and nets. But we can kind of show it here. So let's uh, single target. So I'm going to use, like, I'm just going to alternate here, right, Comic Drain. Actually, now we should just keep spamming the finisher. But that's going to take a bit of time, actually. So we'll just, we'll alternate. Just to kind of show you what it actually does. We'll bring the sparring target down to 35%. So it's still, the other thing, too, is that all the finishers are still going to be vulnerable to interrupt the entire time. And are you really going to put in power channeling on just to save that? And really, with like I'm already running this at, at 200, so I should have the uh, the it, uh, the I already have the 35% base damage. Sorry, and really, the 35% base damage isn't really much to speak of. It's still 3k ticks with a crit of like one, so still heat. But the heat vision dots itself are still well stronger than this actual 35% uh, iconic drain. So it's still would you give up? <clears throat> Would you give up the uh, the cooldown of heat vision just to use spam a finisher? Uh, I should not have hit circle breaker there. Let's wait. Let's wait for that actually. Okay. So yeah. So obviously the base ticks of heat vision are still well stronger than this. So you're not going to give up heat vision just to run this like a finisher artifact because one heat vision is free. <laughs> so that, there you saw it there. The more card you saw the little animation there. If we go to the combat log, uh, thirty-nine five six five damage to sparring target. So an extra forty k hit. That's you know I don't exactly know how many stacks that would mean because you got no idea. I'm not sure if the stacks are counting individually from each hit. So I'm assuming it will because iconic drain um, has the most hits. So I'm assuming each time I do this, it's seven hits. So um, I guess we can actually won't apply anymore. So I still think it would take too long. So we can kind of count here. And I can actually, I'll keep doing this, and then we'll pick up the video once I've actually brought this down, just using the stack so we can count actually how many there are. So I'll cut that just so you're not uh, watching it here. Okay, so ironically just procced. I jumped a little bit ahead of myself. So you see the Mort card, sparring target for 83,087. So technically, since Iconic Drain is 7 hits, then I should only need 10 of them to get max of 70 stacks. So I'm going to do this. We'll just do 10 here, and then you can actually show it. Because that should be it. Because I think it took... Um, I think it took 21 or 22 Iconic Drains to bring the sparring target from full down. So that's what, 3... So be four, and we can mix in heat vision too to speed this up a bit. So this would be five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'll do another one for good measure, just in case I missed one. So I'll just do one more here. That should get us below. So once again, that should be at max stack. So we can see if either we get a crit or we just get the regular one for the, about the 86k damage. 55391. That's a little more. So obviously I don't think I can scroll up to. I'd never be able to find it. I don't think that was a crit though. The first one. But 
once again 55k so not amazing damage like it's 55k damage just for using a finisher artifact that you have to lose might for that you have to work a finisher into rotation which is going to be awkward in the first place unless there's like e-chain from rage because then at least that's uh, nice and quick but that's only one stack or two stacks of your melee or melee sorry but you know it's just there's no finishers that are good right now anyway like you would never use a finisher you know, rage only use a finisher because it's it's nice one single hit and if it crits it's nice uh, but you never get to 70. You'd have to use E-Chain 70 times in a fight to get that uh, to get that high. But I guess if you're using E-Chain and Channeled Hate, it can be a little bit higher, but or take a little bit less time. But I think Rage is the Rage is the only one I can think of that uh, uses a finisher. Because even as Fire, I didn't use Snuff Out as a Might DPS. You just use like Absorb Heat and like Absorb Heat Heat Vision. You don't use Snuff Out as well. Uh, but I know Rage. Rage would use E-Chain and um, channeled hate so i guess for rage my dps would be handy to use the artifact but i just I, the way it's it's currently it's current rendition i just don't see it being practical uh like i compared to what like the like a prec dps run the gem of horus my god like you know it is a crazy crazy increase in damage from a prec dps running the gem of horus but like a might dps running the lamort card really gets like a subpar increase one that completely changes your loadout like the gem of horrors you just you get a new ability every five seconds you have to run it so okay but the might dps have to run but the gem of horror like this the town strike has already does really good damage itself as long as it's at 200 or on single target but the might dps we're stuck running a finisher changing our entire rotation so it's the finisher damage is the base damage of the finisher is already less than heat vision so there's no incentive to run the finisher over heat vision so then you're running double channel abilities or taking off like robot psychic just to throw a finisher on and then you're losing all the sustained damage from robot psychic the entire fight and then once again once it reaches 50 uh 35 percent in pending doom it's useless uh so like say in a boss fight you want the boss gets gets to 35 percent okay you're going to get like an extra like 80 to 100k damage or something like that in a raid and then then what then you you have a useless ability in your loadout, unless they, they really crank up the the damage of the the finisher when it's below. But I mean, right now it, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to run this. They'd have to make some changes on it. But compared to like the new like the gem, amazing increase. Like the page of destiny, amazing increase for a healer. Uh, the strategist card. Uh, this one, no, scrap this one. <laughs> but the transformation card, the, the increased crits, amazing increase. So you got three artifacts that are amazing. One that's like weird, but like subpar, and then the might DPS. Which, like Prec DPS already had amazing artifacts. And then you got the Lamore card, which basically doesn't like do much for you know a power set at all. So I guess see what we should do is just pop to nature here. And let's just see this on uh, Gorilla here. So let's once I've set up the Gorilla test, we'll, we'll hop back here. Okay, so Nature Grill, I'm not setting up dots for purposes because there's no point. Uh, this is showing the test. So Impaling Thorns, finisher, 4.4 seconds, uh, which is odd, which I'll show you in a sec. Uh, and, but the main thing to mention is Gorilla and AoE. So Impaling Thorns, the finisher, is AoE in a Gorilla. So let's see what happens in terms of the proc. I've been doing Impaling Thorns this entire time, so the, uh, the more proc should be fairly decent. Whoa. Uh, let's go back to the check that one for a sec. So the Mort card critically damaged sparring target for 186,308. So that was with doing impaling thorns the entire time bringing it down. Which you wouldn't necessarily be using impaling thorns on single target regardless. But if there's, but the thing with the gorilla is that with it being AOE, it, say if there's a whole bunch of ads that are high health, like a new DLC ads, you're still going to get any stacks on those entire targets. So whenever that ad dies, so we can see here, because this one, that one doesn't look like 35, so let's see if we get another card proc on it. Yeah, there's another card proc. I think I already got the card on that one too. That was obviously a bit lower because the stacks were used on the other one. That's why it was only 4,306. But I did get the second proc there. So it just makes it really powerful for Gorilla because it's going to be AoE finisher. Same thing with Hard Light, which we'll get, I'll show in a second here just to see how that one works in terms of uh, Light Blast. But once again, it, it improves Grill already. But the thing with the, the cooldown was that Impaling Throne is 4.4 seconds, but with the artifact, it should be reduced by 25%, which would be 1.1 seconds. So it should be 3.3 seconds. So 1, 2, 
three, four. You know, that's still four seconds. And I know in uh, past artifacts, like with the orb, if you equip the orb on your loadout slot, it'll change this cooldown and change the power cost and stuff, but it doesn't seem to be working in this case. I'm sure that's a bug, but at the moment it's not changing the cooldown of the finishers, which would be even stronger for a gorilla, a nature, because then you'd have, you know, Impaling Thorns is an AoE attack every three seconds. Okay, so that brings us to our next DPS artifact, which is going to be the Gem of Horus. Uh, this is an interesting precision-only artifact, and what I mean by that is, so we have our regular um, loadout tray ability, so if we, as soon as we put in the artifact, you'll see you've learned Talon Strike. So, it's going to be an actual new loadout ability tray, so if we go to Talon Strike, so 5 second cooldown, 400 power cost, which is the highest power cost move you can have, besides the orb, uh, that's the same as Mini Nuke. So use the power of Gem of Horus to strike down your foes. Using this attack to reset your hit counter, so it brings everything down to zero. After the effects of the Talon Strike to be modified by your hit counter, so an 8 to 12 hit counter, hit target for base damage and applied bleed, damage over time for 12 seconds, so basically just sets up a dot. Uh, 13 plus hit counter, hit target for 200% of base damage, that's at 120. And at 160, if the target is affected by bleed, your 13% hit counter hits for over 300%, or th hits for 300% base damage instead. And at rank 200, the Talon Strike now hits 8 targets. Uh, so that is a massive, massive difference from 160 to 200, which we'll show in a sec here. So we'll first we'll put this on. Town Strike. Uh, we'll actually show 160 first. It makes it a little bit easier here. So say we do Brawling here. So at 160, so you need an 8 to 12 hit counter. So now if I do it there, you saw a single target hit, and then it sets a bleed. So it's going to be 12 seconds of a dot. But if we're in a 12 or a 13 hit counter, with bleed, so we'll just set a bleed again. And then we'll go back and do 13. And you saw there, 57k hit. So that's the, that, that was honestly a crit as well, 57, 299. So it's got the bleed damage over time, as well as you have, if you have that, whatever, if you have that 13%, or 13, I keep calling it 13%, 13 hit counter, Town Strike, uh, it's going to hit for 300 base damage, so that's at 160. So you saw the potential there, but obviously this at 160 or below, which is going to be a single target artifact, which is going to be more playing into Flurry Shot, and would do wield, but at 200, it turns into the AoE artifact. So if we go do the same thing again, so we'll just do get an 8, we apply bleed. Now the same thing, we're going to do, and I see the same thing was AoE, so we'll see if we can get uh, a better one here. So 59, you saw the same thing, multiple hits, so uh, even the same thing if we jump to the uh, 8 targets here. Okay, bleed set up. And the mega hit. So I'm not even touching the weapon buff, and that was a 72k parse, just by, you know, just the bleed damage, and the town strike damage was 72k at range, <laughs> without even touching the weapon buff. I didn't even have wired on, which so I wasn't even proccing the venomous dispenser. It's the same thing. So if we just do it like this, we can set that up. Yeah, it's the same thing. So, 80k, 81k parse for max range. You know, base damage electric is not touching that for might based. So you can see how powerful it is at 200 compared to 160. Uh, the other thing as well, brawling, it's all about revolving around the hit counter uh, and setting up, having bleed set up without going over into the 13, which brawling uh, Shuriken Storm makes that a little bit awkward. Uh, the other thing that Batuba has said on the forums is that if a target has bleed, so that means another prick DPS in your run is setting a bleed on that target, you'll still get your own 300% base damage. So obviously 
the way the artifact setup, he wants you to get your own bleed. And obviously, if you don't have bleed, you're you're missing on that damage over time. So that's still some decent damage you're missing out on. But if you have another DPS in your group setting up bleed, you'll still get that 300% increase in, on your damage, 300% of your base damage. You'll still get that hit regardless of that you don't have bleed. It's just that the target has to have bleed. That's what he said on the forums. And correct me if I'm wrong, but that's the way I understood his post. So if we go to something like Doomspin here, where we can uh, set up our own, we can kind of control, because Doomspin doesn't have the weapon mastery, so we don't have to worry about it. We can actually clip out of Doomspin whenever we want with a hit counter, technically. So if we uh, if we go into Doomspin here, and then once we've reached that, we're going to dip out of it. And then we're going to wait till we're at 13. So it just gives you an idea there. So, you know, 63, 76. And this is only, um, what am I at? I have to wait for the wire buff to expire. I think I'm around 28 or 29k prec. Once that runs out. Okay. And that's at uh, 29k prec. So that's not even max prec. I, I think prec now on live servers over 30 now, I believe. But that obviously still that's with two artifacts. But um, the other thing as well I have to mention as well, since the Renetless Precision Neck mod, you need to maintain a hit counter above nine, and then for six seconds afterwards to get that four percent, you're going to miss out on most of that with uh, this artifact. You still get some of the uptime while before you get the hit counter. It's just that you're going to be kind of constantly overriding your Relentless Precision proc. So that's why it's not, it's going to take some messing around. Yeah, obviously what you've seen here is the damage is quite excessive and is, is very powerful. Uh, but in terms of needing it at 160 or 200, I think it's one of those ones you have to keep at 200 just for that AOE. Okay, as a gadgets example that I was talking about, at least with gadgets, you'd be able to uh, clip the Town Strike every five seconds with Suppressor Turret regardless, and you can still run Taser Bull. You can't run it on Stealth. Stealth, you can't run Town Strike yet. I'm not sure if they're going to be adjusting that, so that would impact uh, Mental as well with Invisibility. But uh, it would essentially there, same thing, what are we at? Uh, General Horus 200. So we can have bleed set up. See, that's the other issue is that you're going to get screwed for power. So, <laughs> obviously you saw, well you still got the 73, 216 hit, and that was, that was with Talon Strike, that, that wasn't even a surprise attack. But the issue is that you're going to get drained quickly on power, because you got the Taser Pull, you got the Battle Display, so you got the 600 power cost cl uh, clip there, and you got Talon Strike, which is 400, and you're still jump canceling with Suppressor Turret, so y you can pull it off with gadgets, but you're going to be very, very power heavy. We can go back to like the 200 Error Storm. So let's go and apply bleed. Then you just have to wait until you're over that 13 window. So you. You get how effective it can be. You know, it's it's going to be regardless, <laughs> regardless of my poor showing my prec DPS. Uh, it's going to be a massive improvement for uh, prec DPS, especially at 200. That's the unfortunate thing. It has to be 200 to be effective because at 160, it's going to be single target. And while single target can be effective, it's going to be a little bit awkward with the flurry shot because you have nothing else to clip with. Like with gadgets, you can pull it off because you got the suppressor turret clip to mat line up with that five seconds. But if you don't, if you're another artifact, you you may still or another power set. You may find yourself uh, better off running Tornado Pull, uh, which you normally wouldn't. If you're not super speed, obviously you wouldn't have a choice, but uh, it's, it's definitely an artifact that you have to be get to 200 to be effective to have that Town Strike damage. But that, once again, that Town Strike damage is massive on AoE.